Sunday night, a very brave off-duty police officer in Sao Paulo, Brazil was attacked and it was kind of, you know, all over social media such that it really started going around on Monday. I did a narrated video on it on Tuesday. I'll put a card there and a link in the description for you to watch. It generated a little bit of controversy because I talked a little bit about how women see the world in the Western world and how they're programmed to kind of deal with social situations. And some men really, really didn't like that. So here's what I did. I asked our executive officer, Stephanie Widener, to weigh in on this topic a little bit. And so, you know, our audience is overwhelmingly male. Guys, I am going to ask you to do two things. Number one, I want you to watch the first half of what Steph says here to get a feel for how the women in your world actually experience social encounters. And if you doubt it, I want you to go and ask a couple of the women in your life. Maybe ask your wife or your mom or your sister or your cousin or your friend who is in the cubicle next to you or something like that to see if it has any validity. I guarantee you it does. Secondly, in the second half, she offers women from a position of knowledge and ability herself some alternate ways of dealing with some of these situations that are a little bit better, I think much better for self-defense. So I want you to watch those so you know them and I want you to share this with the women in your life so that maybe they have a little bit better strategy to protect themselves from criminal violence. Okay, so we did a video on the main channel the other day that brought up a lot of extra discussion about something that people had some strong thoughts on or maybe they didn't understand. And we also got a few emails from people wanting us to expand on it a little bit more. Um, so that is what we are going to do here. Uh, the video will be linked here so that you can go ahead and watch it. But a brief description of what happened. There was a, a female law enforcement officer that was off duty in Brazil, which is really how a lot of really good videos on our channel begin. Um, but she was walking late at night alone down a street and a, a car passed her and the guy in the car, the car targeted her for whatever reason. He may have targeted her just because she was a female walking alone and no one else was around. And it was a great opportunity for him to do whatever he had intended on doing, whether that was robbing or, or worse, uh, his body language and the way that happened may leads me to believe is a little worse. Than, than robbery, but she handled her business and we will never know what his intentions are because uh, he went to grab her, she reacted, and then he took the asphalt temperature challenge, the end of him. The beginning of lessons for us though. And one of the things that was brought up in the, in the, in the video was the fact that she was not looking at him um, as he got out of the car. Now I, I guarantee, and I think everyone will agree that she knew there was, there was a potential threat. I mean, she's law enforcement in Brazil where law enforcement are, are kind of targeted and attacked at an alarming rate. She's a female, all of these things. She noticed the guy getting out of the car, but she purposefully didn't look at him. Now, she, was she paying attention? Yes, she was. But the fact of the matter is she didn't turn her attention toward him. And in my opinion, that can um, both de-escalate some situations, but also potentially escalate them. And I want to talk about that just a little bit. Um, this is not going to be new or earth shattering for most women in the audience. This is going to be something that you know intuitively or that you've done your entire life without really thinking about it. And, it, and it's going to make sense. Uh, for you, I have some ideas of maybe some better ways to handle this from a self-defense perspective. Um, so, so stick with me through the first part where I try to discuss the problem a little bit. Now, one of the things that John said in that video that some men in particular took offense to was that uh, women are programmed not to offer offense to a man in, in Western culture. And whether you agree with it or not, th there is an awful lot of truth there. Now, does that mean that they are explicitly sat down by grandma and instructed, don't you dare offer offense to a man? No, not at all. What it means is we are all socialized in different ways from little children, our parents, our teachers, our siblings, our neighborhood. Everyone plays a role in teaching us how to behave in society. If we behave in a way people don't like, they may do something as subtle as sending you some cues that they don't like it. Maybe you get a look from mama if you're acting up in church. If you continue to act up, maybe you get a thump on the top of the head. I don't know, but you learn to pick up the cues sooner and sooner. And you, most of us tend to not behave like three-year-olds in adult society. And a lot of that is from social programming, social, con um, 
is just learning cues and responding to them, okay? Uh, it's not explicit instruction, it's just socialization. You can think of uh, the importance of socializing your dogs, for example. That's not training. Socializing and training aren't the same thing. Sitting them down, teaching them to sit, teaching them to heal, all of those things are important. But getting them out around other dogs and around strangers so they can read some of these cues and learn to respond to them appropriately or pay the consequences if they are inappropriate, they learn how to do that. The younger they do that, the more natural it becomes. They're able to send signals to other dogs that they want to play wrestle rather than actually fight. Uh, some dogs are very good at that and they, and they have problems. So this is the same type of thing. Okay, and it's ingrained and it's difficult to avoid. We've been dealing with the consequences of our actions since since we were tiny. And so um, it, it's all pretty natural. It's all pretty, you know, uh, reactionary, reflexive. We just do it without thinking about it. All of us do it. We all innately, I, I'm reading my notes here. This is a topic that I'm really passionate about and I'm uh, concerned we're gonna head down some rabbit holes. And if we do, I need a map to, to find our way back. This is a surprise tool that can help us later, is Stephanie's notes. So um, we all innately understand how to invite social interaction with strangers. Um, with our loved ones, we may do it differently, but if you are in a restaurant and you want to get your waiter's attention, um, you will catch their eye, is the first thing most people will, will look to do. They will attempt to, um, to just catch their eye. Uh, look up, turn their attention towards them. If they don't, you know, and make some sort of expectant move, letting the waiter or waitress know that they are looking for some interaction and some communication. Um, if that doesn't work, we may escalate. We may, you know, wave our hands or we may, or we may call to them. That's really not our first go-to because we also don't really, that we know that that will bring all eyes onto us through our social programming. And we, most of us really don't want that. So if we can get it by just catching our eye and turning their attention, that's what we want to do. Uh, if you're in a doctor's office and they, and the doctor walks into the room and he's speaking to someone outside the room or reading your chart, we don't immediately start talking to him, he has not given us the cue that he is ready to begin the interaction. He will stop his conversation or she will stop and look at us and uh, then, we will, then we will begin. They may ask a question, but we know the interaction is about to begin when they turn their attention to us, when they look to us. Okay, um, there are other times we don't want intera social interaction and, and we shut that down by not giving attention when we're sitting uh, in an airplane with strangers. Most of us, you know, aren't really doing a lot of turning our attention toward or looking at. Some people are visitors and enjoy that, and that is how they would get that interaction started. But an awful lot of us are avoiding the gaze of strangers because we prefer not to interact. Um, so I think we all innately understand that, men and women. We also know that there are times that we all avoid that behavior because it specifically encourages social interaction. So think about being on a bus or a subway or somewhere you're contained and you can't avoid having to be part of some uh, some inappropriate behavior. Maybe we'll think, you know, sort of a sort of a nutty person spouting off at the end of the bus. You can't get off just yet, although you're planning on it. You don't want to ignore them. You need to be paying attention to them. But everybody knows that if everyone on the bus is ignoring him and one person looks and turns, that invites social interaction and nobody has time for that. Nobody wants to deal with it. Now, men may not want to get in an ego battle or maybe they don't want to have that viewed as a, as a dominance display to where the other person wants to, wants to engage. Uh, maybe they just don't want the hassle of having to deal with it and being singled out. So they don't want to invite that interaction either. Women tend to have a far different motivation and very often that motivation is fear. Now, I think the fear is easy for many men to understand because frankly, and we're gonna speak in generalities here, most men can easily physically dominate and hurt most women. Even of the same size, even if the woman is even slightly bigger, unless she is very strong and highly skilled, most men are going to be able to do her harm. Now, does that happen very often? It does. Um, this is generally where you start to hear from men that, that they don't see it, they don't understand it. Um, I would ask you to carry on with me for a little bit. 
one thing many, I, th I think you would agree that if you were to observe, that most good guys, if they were to observe some highly inappropriate and assaultive behavior uh, from a larger man towards a woman that was fearful, they would step in and they would help. Many would do that, or many would at least like to say they would do that. Fact of the matter is it doesn't happen all that often, but many men would like to believe that they would do that. So let's say for a minute that I believe that you would. Because uh, I do, there are a lot of great guys in this, in this audience that would, that would be happy to stand up. Um, the, the bad guys know that too. Uh, so that is not the time they engage in that assaultive, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's whatever, um, behavior. They don't do it then because they know that many of the men will interfere. Even some of the women would interfere. So they wait until they have someone targeted and someone alone, and then they engage in this behavior. And then when the woman reports it later, you hear a lot of the, I don't believe it. I've never seen that sort of thing happening. And the woman says, no, it happens over and over. I've had this happen like five times. And then everyone, well, she's just a liar. Why is it happening to her five times? And, you know, I never hear about it. I never see it. Well, frankly, she may have something in her behavior that is signaling to people that she's a good target. So they wait until uh, they can get her alone and then they can target her. Um, some guys need much less of an impressive target. They will, they will target anyone. Um, Others, you know, really want to key in on people that they think they can dominate and that are vulnerable. So just because you don't see it happening or if you're a woman that hasn't had it happen often, um, you don't have to go very far outside your circle to know that, um, that this happens uh, with a lot more frequency than we should be comfortable with. So women know that there's this mask that a lot of men have. Um, so I don't know when we, so we're sitting at a bar and you offer to buy me a drink. I don't know if I tell you no, if you're going to be the one that is fine and you appreciate that firm, straightforward response, or if you're going to be the one that takes off the mask and throws a drink in my face, or you are the one that meets me out in the parking lot when I'm going on my way home. Uh, those are both actual uh, true happenings that have happened uh, to friends of mine. So... Yeah, that happens. And you don't know what man you're dealing with. You just know that likely the man you're dealing with can dominate you and can hurt you. And so you come up with a diff couple of different strategies to do that. One might be not looking at someone you consider a threat, not inviting that social interaction to begin with, hoping that avoiding that will shut them down from the beginning. Uh, and many guys would look at that and say, oh, she's not giving me the time of day. Clearly, we don't want to talk. Uh, this is a little bit a little bit of a rabbit hole, a little bit off topic. Another thing women might do is be very nice. They may go ahead and engage you in conversation. They may let you buy you a drink. They may give you a fake number instead of standing up for it. Because again, they don't know who you are. They don't know if you're wearing a mask. They don't know if simply saying no is going to cost them later. Uh, a higher price than they should have to pay. And a higher price than they are willing to pay. So many times they will... Uh, play along until they get into a safer, more advantageous position. So, uh, I mean, you can look at that as playing games as you want. Uh, it's important that you need to understand, though, that that is a safety and self-defense mechanism I see a lot of women engage in. Um, and you, as a man that doesn't mean ill will to the woman that you talk to, may be frustrated by that, and I get it. Um, I would much prefer straightforward communication. But the fact of the matter is, you're not every guy. And the fact that you don't know that there are other guys out there makes it problematic uh, for us. So we don't really know who we're dealing with. So that is really a key thing that you will see in a lot of women is, is they'll avoid that gaze. They'll avoid that attention. Uh, maybe some of it's denial. I don't know. I don't think so. I think most of us have really uh, in, had it ingrained in us that if we don't, that, that, that any attention is an invitation to social interaction. And... And nobody wants social interaction with some stranger on a dark street when you're by yourself. Okay, so back to your notes. Um, again, you may think that these aren't things that you do, and that's fine. You may not be reading social cues this way. You may not wait for um, uh, people to, to give you signals that they want to talk or that they want to interact. But uh, that says more about you than about the fact that these still exist. The, the cues are still the cues, whether or not you engage in them. Um, maybe it says that you have difficulty reading social, social cues, and not that I get. Um, or maybe it says you don't care about the comfort of other people, that I also get. Now, 
I can see a time where, where both of these strategies are helpful. There is a time to discourage social interaction. Now, going back to our story, you're traveling alone, you're female on the bus, and someone starts acting crazy and being aggressive in the front of the bus. Definitely pay attention. Definitely maneuver yourself into the most advantageous place if you cannot leave. However, this is not a bad time to determine if avoiding social interaction is your best course. Not ignoring that there's a problem, not if he's not in your face, but perhaps you just don't want to give any signals that he can key in on for you. Totally get that, totally can see it. However, there's an awful lot of the time where women are interviewed and if you know what the interview process is, victim selection, uh, a lot of criminals, a lot of predators, uh, they're out looking and hunting for victims. Uh, that may be something as simple as they want somebody to grow up in a concert or on a subway and you never even know who they are. Or someone to say something really icky to and make them uncomfortable. And, and they enjoy that. They enjoy making people uncomfortable. And they will likely never get caught doing that and never go to jail for doing that. So it's the kind of low level creep you run into a lot. Um, but so they will they will interview you. And so to me, this is a time where breaking out of that pattern that many, most women engage in, I think is really good. Um, there have been times when I have been interviewed. Um, one specific time, a group of three people came up and asked me on the street if I had 53 cents. Uh, the game was pretty clear to me from the beginning, and I won't go into it because there was actually a lot of thought into this because I had my disabled son with me, and there was a lot of things I had to think about and do. But what I wanted to do was communicate with them very clearly. Uh, if I consider you a threat, now if this is guy on the subway that I consider a threat and avoiding didn't work, and now I think you're a threat to me, I'm gonna switch to this next. If I see you on the street and you approach me asking for help, um, I'm gonna start to consider you a threat. And, and I'm gonna move accordingly. Does that mean I'm gonna spray you with pepper spray or shoot you? No, that's not what it means. It means I'm gonna start thinking. I'm gonna start ticking some things through. I'm gonna start managing this contact with this person that I don't know, okay? So this is going to be, they came up and they asked me for money and I stopped walking. I squared myself up with them and I looked them each in the eye in turn. And I said, no, I don't have any money for you. Now, a couple of things I was not trying to do. I was not trying to communicate disdain. I was not trying to communicate a disrespect. I was not tr also not trying to issue a challenge. Any of those things to the wrong guy um, can really backfire on you, okay? Uh, besides, they might have been a couple guys looking for change. I don't know. There's no reason for me to treat them with disdain or disrespect. That was not the message I was trying to communicate. What I wanted to communicate was, uh, I see you and I'm not afraid to look at you, okay? I'm not afraid to stop what I'm doing and deal with this situation. Um, and so that is what I did by stopping and squaring up and I stood up a little straighter. Um, I wanted to send the message, I'm not challenging you, but neither am I cowed by you. If I need to handle the situation, I will, but right now I'm just gonna communicate very clearly, I don't have any help for you and this is going to go no further, okay? Um, I also want to let them know I'm starting to kind of run options through my head. They were clearly running options through theirs, and I was running options through mine. I also think that sends a really good message that I am atypical. I am unpredictable. Most people, an awful lot of women, are not going to want to engage. They're going to be, they're going to be looking down. They're going to be looking into their purses. They're going to be trying to avoid uh, this encounter, and that just opens them up to, to attack, I think, um, so what I want to do is I want to show that I'm not typical. If they are counting on me doing something in order for me to be victimized because it is something that a lot of people do, you know, predictability makes you a whole lot easier to manage. And I want to communicate to them that I am unpredictable. Uh, and I am. I also, uh, that I'm not typical. I am not going to just be victimized. Things are going to be weird. If they want to engage me, it's going to get weird. Um, and that's what I want to send a message to. Maybe that, you know, this isn't, mm -mm, mm -mm. this isn't what you want to do. That's what I want to send. I, I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be disrespectful. I don't want to say, you know, the come at me, bro. Um, none of that. I just want to communicate. I see you. I'm not afraid to look at you. I'm not cowed by you. Uh, so that's, that's my message there. And I think that can really aid you in being deselected as the victim. 
And if you can be deselected as a victim, that's a good day. Now, if you aren't deselected, frankly, in this particular video, she was not going to be deselected. It was very clear from his body language the minute he got out of the car, he was targeting her. Um, and he was moving quickly. He had made his decision. I think there's precious little she could have done to discourage him at this point. Certainly stopping and looking at him, I don't think would have dissuaded him at all. And like I said, fortunately, we're never going to find out because she took care of it. But even if you are not able to be deselected as a victim, if you are not able to disengage from this encounter or send a message that you're not a good victim, um, it gives you a heads up. It gives you time. When this woman did look and see her go signal and started to back up, she was giving herself more time and she needed it. And that time bought her the option of getting her firearm drawn and getting him shot. And I really think that saved her bacon to be, to be really frank. So if I'm able to be deselected, that is what I want. That is why I purposefully do not, uh, once I feel you are a threat, I will not disengage from, I want to communicate with you. And that's what I want to communicate. I am not the victim you want me to be. Okay, uh, two resources on this that I think are great. If you have not read both of these books, I don't care where you're at in your level and skill of self-defense, um, these are great. For one thing, they're also really good for people that aren't into that life. You know, they're not about that life. They're not into guns or not into whatever. These are really great strategies and really great information for everyone. Okay, the first one is The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker, and we'll try to put a, a link down in the, in the description as well so you can find it. Um, it's fantastic. It's been a long time since I've read it. It is my understanding that I know the, the version that I read had some, again, quite a bit of an anti-gun slant towards the second half of the book. Uh, it's my understanding he's changed that. I have not read the update. Even if he hasn't changed it, even if you get an older version of the book, it is definitely worth it to read. You don't have to agree with every point to get great uh, help and information from that. Chew the meat, spit out the bones, okay? Uh, really good. And again, it's my understanding he's changed some of that. But um, the second one is called Creepology by Anna Valdeseri. Um And it, I, the men that have read this have not had as glowing reviews as the women that have read it had. I would really encourage you, if you have women in your life, to consider reading it, slogging through it, because it really gives a good picture of the situation. Now, I was surprised by this. An awful lot of it gave me a structure and a skeleton of ideas and ways to make decisions. And I was surprised by it. It's really, really hard to describe. Um, it's an excellent how-to book. Uh, it's an excellent what it is book. It is not um, a very simple, this is how you deal with, with creeps. It's not. It tells you a lot about different kinds of creeps and what you may be dealing with, what some of the difficulties in dealing with them are, and what some of the pros and cons of dealing with them are, uh, forthrightly or otherwise. So I think that's another one that's really good. So I would highly recommend everybody read both of those. At uh, the very least, Gift of Fear. Uh, if you're a woman, I would definitely pick up Creepology. I would encourage the men to do it. I just know that the men I've talked to really had trouble uh, identifying with it because it is just not something they deal with on a daily basis. The women, even the incredibly strong um, uh, women of great presence, uh, were really finding this to be a super helpful book. Um, so, so that is my take on it. That is, that is what I think it's important to know. And again, as a woman, this is probably not earth shattering news to you. Um, unfortunately, uh, you've probably dealt with it at some point in your life. Uh, most certainly the women that are in your very small circle have, and you know about it. Uh, over a lifetime, you will very likely have to deal with more. Uh, so I think these are some really good strategies to understand why you're doing what you're doing and maybe some other ideas about once you've been targeted, why it might be a good idea to try something different so that you can cover your ASP.